Hey, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing a first impressions on the Kaleidos Make Your Escape collection. Kaleidos did send this collection to me in PR and this collection includes the Escape Pod palette. It also includes two lo-fi blushes, three highlighters, an eye primer, and a lip gloss, as well as a couple of sponges. They are not paying me to make this video, this is strictly just a first impressions because I'm really excited about this collection. I don't have the prices for you in this video, but in my review video, I will. I will do a follow-up review video. This is strictly just a first impressions. This is the first time that I applied any of the makeup on my face. This collection launches on June 11th, which I hope I'm getting this video up before June 11th. I mean, the collection does launch today, so uh, we're close. We're close. I also did swatches of this entire collection, so if you're curious to see my first impressions, like a little tutorial type video, as well as some swatches of this collection, then please keep on watching. Let's start. I'm going to start swatching the blushes because I feel like I want to save the palette till last since this is a big boy. So let's start off with the Lo-Fi Blush Duo in Lo-Fi Peach. This is the shade Punch and the top shade is called Igari. I'm going to swatch these ones on my hand so you can see them a bit better. So this is the shade Punch. Really beautiful peach colour. I'm a big fan of that. And the metallic blush in this palette is called Igari. Oh, look at that. It's got a nice... It's like a peach. From this angle, it looks peachy gold. And then from this angle, it looks pink. Very pretty. Now for Lo-Fi Rose, the matte shade is called Mood. Right here. As you can see, it's like a light, dusty rose. Got, it has more of a purple undertone. It is very nice. And then the other shade is called Bloom. I know I swatched it in my tutorial, but I'm gonna swatch it again. This is Bloom. My gosh, it looks like a strong, strong gold when I look at it from this angle. And then when I show it like this, it looks very pink. So these are the colors right here. Don't know if you're going to be able to see the gold shift from this one, but it's ridiculously pretty. So now let's swatch the highlighters. Let's swatch Mars Melter first. It looks white in the pan, and this is what it looks like on the finger. Duochromes are really hard to capture on camera, so you guys are going to have to take my word for it. Let me actually get a little bit more. As you can see, it has a white base, but then when you show it in the light, it has kind of like a peachy almost like crimson duochrome to it. Next up is Diamond Dasher. It looks like this. This is a gold to peach sparklier highlighter. This is Diamond Dasher. This is so... you can even tell how reflective this one is compared to the duochrome one because the duochrome one doesn't have any flecks of shimmer to it, like it doesn't have any glitter to it. However, Diamond Dasher does. Hopefully you can see the difference, how Diamond Dasher does have some more glitter to it. And the final shade is Moon Cruiser, the one that I'm wearing on my face today. This one is very sparkly. It looks like this. They all essentially look white in the pan. But this is Moon Cruiser. Oh, that is, oh, that is beautiful. That is definitely my type of highlighter. As you can see, it has a bit of a more purple shift to it, like a purple to blue shift. I don't think I'm gonna swatch the lip gloss since we can see what it looks like on my lips right now. And also the Tone Activator Eye Primer, there's not really a point to swatch it because you've seen what it looks like on my eyes. I don't see, see the need for it. But now we're gonna swatch the Escape Pod palette. I'm gonna go row by row. I do not have any eye primer on my arm, it is just my bare arm. So the first shade that I am swatching is called Soiree. A very beautiful lavender purple. More of a cool toned lavender. Next shade is Mardi Gras, which is a more warm toned purple. Very nice. These are the two shades I'm actually wearing on my eyes today. And the next shade I'm also wearing, and it's called Flamingo. It's a bit drier, slightly drier, but it still swatches really nicely and still 
looks nice on the eyes. The next shade is called Tango and it's a neon orange. My finger is stained, I do apologize. But I don't think it'll affect the swatches too much, but that is Tango right there. And the final shade in the first row is called Exoplanet. Exoplanet? Yes, Exoplanet. And it's a kind of cornflower blue. Oh, this one is really, really soft. I don't know if you could see all the kick up in the, in the swatch. That shade is a bit more dusty and it's a little bit patchy in the swatch actually. Now we're moving on to the more metallic row in the palette and the first shade is called Starlit Sonata. I'm wearing this on my inner corners. Oh, that is beautiful. Do you see the shine? Stunning. The next shade is called Amaretto and it's like a rose gold metallic. It's like a rose gold with the like a gold sheen to it as well. The next shade is called Space Oasis and it's a purple with a blue shift. Actually no, it has more of a um, pink shift to it, my apologies. Very nice, oh my gosh, these metallics are insane. The next shade is called Cosmic Cabaret. This is actually one of my mum's favourite shades in the palette. I mean, look at that on my finger. Look at that. I swatched this palette earlier with my mum and she died over this shade. I mean, look at that purple. That is... That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Next is the shade that I'm wearing on my eyes. This is Galactic Gala. A gorgeous green. Love that green. And the last metallic in the palette is also a green shade and this one is called Saturnalia. It's a deeper green, very pretty. The last few shades are matte. The next one is called Bossa Nova. And it's one of the more neutral shades in this palette. It's like a taupe brown, right there. This is probably my least favorite shade in the palette. This one is called Lo-Fi. It is just like a cream color. It's very soft, but it matches my skin tone really well and I don't like beige cream shadows, like that's not my thing, but if you do, this is quite a nice shade. The penultimate shade is called Carnival. It's like a neon coral. Look at that. Look at that. Very gorgeous. And the final shade is called Terrace, and this is a deep chocolate brown. Whoa, okay, that one's really soft. That one is very soft, but it's very pigmented. Look at that, that is gorgeous. And these are all of the swatches from the Escape Pod palette. I completely forgot to end my swatching segment, I'm so sorry, but now you're going to be seeing my full-on like get ready with me tutorial style first impressions of the palette and everything in this collection. So if you were just here for the swatches, thanks for watching. But if you want to see how these products perform on my face, then keep on watching. Okay, so first up, we're going to prime the eyes. Now, normally I do this step off camera, but we do actually have an eye primer to test out in this collection. This is the Kaleidos Tone Activator Eye Primer. And instead of using this primer on both of my eyes, I'm actually going to use my regular eyeshadow primer on one of my eyes and this one on the other eye so we can just see how they differ. If you're curious, my regular eyeshadow primer is the Milani eyeshadow primer. I love this stuff. This is like my third bottle of it. It's so good. Okay, so this primer is pretty liquidy from what I've seen. Let me just get a mirror so we can just prime. Okay, it's got a strong peach tone. Oh, damn. A little goes a very long way. I don't know if you can see on camera, but it has cancelled out some of the veining in my eyes. Now with the Milani one, this one is actually clear. There is no real pigment to it. It's a bit thicker and it comes out as like a beige colour, but once you blend it in, it's essentially invisible. And again, I'm using clean fingers to apply this one. But I don't know if you can tell, this one has the Kaleidos primer, this one has the Milani primer. Now we're going to be testing out the star of this collection. This is the Escape Pod palette and this packaging, stunning already. Kaleidos always kills it with their packaging and it opens up like this. I don't want to blind you since the packaging is 
holographic. And in this palette there are nine mattes and six metallics, making it 15 shades in this palette. I'm not going to hold up this palette for much longer since the packaging is really reflective, but I'm thinking of using the purples mixed with the greens, that's what I'm kind of feeling today. So I'm going to be first dipping into the shade Soiree and putting that in my crease. Just picking it up on a fluffy brush, I'm going to first apply it on the Kaleidos primer side. Actually, let me zoom you guys in so you can see this a bit better. I'm curious about the purples the most, since purples are pretty hard to formulate. And I do love Kaleidos' eyeshadow formula, but I've never tried their purples. I think this might be their first, like, palette with purples, actually. Okay, now I'm gonna do it on the other side with the Milani primer. First I am kind of packing on the colour and then I'm blending in circular motions. When you actually pack the colour on first and then blend it, it actually helps you keep the true colour to it, because when you do blend out purples, I find in particular purples and blues, if you just blend them out straight away they can look kind of grey, so by doing this you actually keep the true colour of the shadow. Does that make any sense? I'm really bad at explaining. Okay, I'm just gonna blend a bit more on the Kaleidos side as well. Okay, so ignoring the fact that these two are both very different shapes, I really like this colour so far. On a more pointed eyeshadow brush, I'm going to be taking this shade right here, this warmer purple, and it's called Mardi Gras. A little bit of kick up in the pan, but I do prefer slightly softer shadows, but just keep that in mind. So far, no fallout on the under eyes. Just gonna blend that in the crease, in the outer crease. I am going in with this little by little because I don't want to pack on too much colour because I find sometimes with purples if you pack on too much colour at once it can get very patchy. Okay I'm just going back in with that first purple shade just to fix up this eye because the shapes are very different and we can't have that. I swear every time I do eyeshadow I, my eyes are never that similar. <laughs> they always look so different. I'm just taking a little bit of that and just blending it out a bit. I'm now going to take this shade right here called Galactic Gala and I'm going to put that all over my lid and I'm going to use a more stiff brush. This is the Makeup Geek Foiled Shadow Brush. I hope they still make these. I don't know if they do but it's such a good, a good eyeshadow brush. We're first going to apply the shade with no glitter primer and then if I feel like it I will uh, put on a glitter primer because I personally prefer metallic shadows using a glitter primer, but for now I'm just going to use a dry brush. Whoa. Wait, that is beautiful, oh my gosh. Stop. This looks exactly like the same formula from their Electro Turquoise palette. I know in their Electro Turquoise and their VR Neon palette they did these really glittery metallic shades and oh my god I'm so glad they kept that formula. Oh my gosh! That is stunning. I want to remind you guys that this is with a dry brush. A dry brush. If I wet my brush with this I can only imagine how beautiful it will look. But this is one of the few like this is one of the few shadows I think that you don't need to wet your brush. Wow. I do have a little bit of glitter fallout underneath my eyes, but that's nothing a little bit of makeup remover can't fix. Wow, okay. Real quick, I'm just gonna go off camera and I'm going to put on my base makeup and then I will come back and we can finish up the eyes and try out the cheek products. Okay, change of plans. I just realised I've just put on my primer and mascara, but this collection does have two sponges. This is what they look like. One is more of like a flat-edged sponge. And this one it looks just like the Real Techniques uh, sponge. So I'm going to wet uh, this one. I'm going to wet this one and I'll be back to do my concealer and see how it works. 
So far it feels pretty soft, not too soft. But yeah, let's go and wet this. Okay, so this is the sponge dry and this is the sponge wet. As you can see, they were both basically the exact same size, so it grew grew a decent amount, grew a decent amount, feels really nice and soft. I'm not gonna be wearing foundation today, so I am gonna put on quite a lot of concealer. Okay, we're gonna start off with that. I'm gonna use the more pointed side of this, just to see how much product it soaks up. I haven't used a sponge to blend out my concealer in a hot minute. It looks really stark on camera, but I promise that once I put the rest of my makeup on, that this shade does work for me. But so far it looks really nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more concealer. It did take away some coverage, but not too much. I'm just gonna just add a bit around my chin and my nose. I'm just gonna use the flat side to blend out the rest. So far, I really like the sponge. It feels really nice and it's not soaking up too much product. It's blending everything in nicely. My concealer doesn't look weird. I'm just gonna set my concealer with my Nabla close-up pressed powder. This powder does darken up the concealer a little bit and makes it match my skin tone a little bit better. This is the shade medium, if you're curious. Okay, so for my lower lash line, I'm thinking of taking this shade right here, Flamingo, as well as Mardi Gras again. I don't want to mix too many colors together, but I do want to test out this pink. It looks very pretty. I have cleaned off this brush, just so you know. I'm gonna put this Flamingo shade on the inner portion of my lower lash line. This pink is a bit drier compared to the other shadows. Not by much, just a little bit. I'm guessing since it's very bright, but it is applying nicely. Okay, now I'm going to be taking the shade Mardi Gras, which is that nice warm purple, on the same brush, tapping it off a little bit. Just on the outer corner, so it blends easier with our crease colours on our lid. I was thinking of using the blue in the palette, but I don't want to risk getting the blue and the pink a bit muddy. Now to finish up the eyes, I'm going to take this shade right here called Starlight Sonata, and it's so pretty. It's like a champagne, greenish, pinkish duochrome. It looks exactly like Philosophy from the Nabla Soul Blooming palette, and if you guys know, that's my favourite eyeshadow, one of my favourite eyeshadows in my collection, so Naturally, I had to go for this one. Ooh. Oh, it's it's a lot more pink, actually, than Nabla Soul Blooming. Oh, wow. This would look gorgeous all over the lid, too. I hope you guys can see this. I am very happy with that. I do have a little bit of glitter fallout on my face, so I'm just going to see if I can just whisk that away. I'm just going to pop on a bit of eyeliner in my waterline, and for that I'm going to be using the Colourpop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Piggy Bank. And that is the eye makeup all done. I, so far, first impressions, really am pretty impressed with this palette. Like, the shimmers are gorgeous. Like, they're seriously stunning. They're just like the shimmer formula in the Electro Turquoise palette and in the VR Neon. I don't own the VR Neon, but I do own Electro Turquoise and the shimmers in this palette are the exact same as the shimmers in that palette. The mattes blend pretty nicely. Of course, I need to test this out further, but so far I'm pretty impressed with it. It is a really nice palette. The only thing to keep in mind is there is some glitter fallout with the metallic shades, but if you do your eye makeup first before doing your base makeup, then you won't really have an issue with that. Really quick, before we get into the blushes and highlighters, I'm just going to apply a bit of bronzer. This is from Becca. Now there are two blushes in this collection. These are the Lo-Fi Duo blushes. This one is Lo-Fi Peach and this one is Lo-Fi Rose. So I'll just show you guys them right now. 
This is the peach one. So pretty. I love this so much. I actually don't own a peach blush in my collection, so this is actually quite perfect for me. And this is the Lo-Fi Rose. Really pretty, like a light lavender. I am curious to see how this one looks. As much as I love the peach one, I don't think it goes with this eye makeup. So we're going to test out Lo-Fi Rose. I'm going to take this blush shade called Mood. These do have a mirror in them as well. The eyeshadow palette does have a mirror as well. I'm just going to take this on my blush brush. Just see how it goes. I don't know if you can see that on camera. In person, it is like a, a light, it is like a light, cool toned, rosy colour. I don't know how much of it you're going to see on camera, but it is showing up on my skin tone. I will say, I don't know if this blush colour is really going to work for deeper skin tones. I have uh, swatched this on my mum. I'll actually include the swatch picture of my hand versus my mum's hand with both of these blush duos on. And my mum does have a medium skin tone and this rose one showed up pretty ashy on her skin tones. So I strictly think that the rose one is just for light to fair skin tones. This is very pretty though. I will say it is really nice. I do like it on my skin tone. I do think this one could be a bit deeper though because this one is pretty light-ish and this one is really light so I think this one could have been the deeper one. That's just my opinion. They do have this shade right here which could be used as a highlighter and honestly it's gorgeous. It's so pretty. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on my finger but it is literally a gold to peach like peachy pink duochrome. Oh, it's so pretty. I'd love to use that as a highlighter. I'm not too sure if you can see that. However, this collection did come out with three new Space Age highlighters. There is Moon Cruiser, Diamond Dasher, and Mars Melter. Mars Melter, yes. <laughs> Playdos also has reformulated Ray Rider, which they came out with with their initial Space Age highlighter release. However, I do already have the original one, and I don't want to open this because I do want to give this to one of my friends. So that's going. This one is Diamond Dasher and it is said to have a gold to peach duochrome, which I really, really like. This one is Mars Melter and this one is more of like, it looks white in the pan, but this has like a crimson to peach duochrome. It's very pretty. And this one, Moon Cruiser, this is a lilac to cobalt blue duochrome. And I will say that Diamond Dasher and Moon Cruiser. These two already, just by looking at them, these are more sparkly and more... I don't know, they're more metallic highlighters, whereas Mars Melter is one of their more like sheeny, like just a sheen on your skin. There's no glitter or sparkle to this one. I'm thinking with this look I'm going to be going in with Moon Cruiser. I think that would suit it the most. So this one is very glittery, I don't know if you can see that, and also these don't have mirrors in them, so... I personally prefer when products have mirrors in them because otherwise I have to grab a new compact, but it's not that big of a deal. Ooh, it's sparkly. It looks a lot like Skywalker. Skywalker is one of my favourite highlighters ever, also from Kaleidos, and this looks very similar. I'll actually swatch them next to each other. I'm curious. I'm actually going to wet my brush. So I find that sparklier highlighters work well when they have a bit of something to grip to. So this is the highlighter applied wet. Wow. Oh. Okay. Real quick, I'm going to swatch Skywalker, this one right here, next to Moon Cruiser, because honestly, I think they look... They look... Okay. There, there are differences, I'm already going to tell you. This one is definitely more blue. Let me try and swatch it there. And then on a different finger, I'm going to swatch Moon Cruiser. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they are different. I'm not sh too sure if you're going to see that on camera. The bottom one, this one right here, is Skywalker and the top is Moon Cruiser. Skywalker has more of a blue shift, whereas Moon Cruiser has more of a pinky shift. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on camera. I am filming with 
studio lights, and usually studio lights are a little bit deceiving. The last product in this collection is one of their Lucid lip glosses. This is in the shade Hypnotize, and it is super pretty. I don't know if you're going to see the duochrome on camera. It is a deep berry with a gold flash to it. I have nothing on my lips, by the way. And that is the lip gloss on my bare lips. And I'm just gonna say, this is, this this feels really nice. It's not as thick as the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bombs, which is my favorite lip gloss formula, but it's not super thin either. It's like a perfect middle. Really nice. It also has little sparkles of like pink, gold, and blue. I wasn't expecting to see the blue. It's very nice. It is very nice. It's nicely glossy. It's not super high shine gloss, which if you like a really, really, really high shine gloss, maybe this one isn't for you. Like, it doesn't feel like a gloss, it feels like a lip balm. And after putting in a little brow gel, this is the completed look. Okay, so real quick, my first impressions. Let's start off with the eye primer. I don't know if there is too much of a difference on the eyes, so far, obviously, I will keep testing this out. It does leave a nice tint and kind of like almost blanks out the veins on your eyelid without looking like concealer. I personally don't like using concealer that much as an eye base because I don't like how stark it looks, but this one does cancel out the veining without looking too, too intense. Next is the Escape Pod Eyeshadow Palette. I really like this so far. Again, I will keep testing all of these products out, but this is strictly just a first impressions. Really am liking this so far. Um, I like the look that I did. I love the metallic shades in here already, like that green on my lid. Ugh, I'm so obsessed with it. The mattes blend out nicely. So far, I'm liking it. The blush duos, I only used the lo-fi rose and I only used the matte shade in this that is like a more shimmery shade that you could use as a highlighter or as a blush topper. It blended really nicely on my cheeks, looks really pretty, although I will say this only works on lighter skin tones. This will definitely not work on medium to deeper skin tones. I'm excited to test out the peach one. I feel like the peach one is going to be the one that most people are gonna gravitate towards because I feel like this could work on a few more different, uh, different skin tones. The sponge was really nice. I did like it a lot. It expanded nicely. It feels really soft, blended out my concealer well. I'm excited to try out the other shade. The highlighters. Now, of course, I only used Moon Cruiser, but it is very high shine, very metallic. It's the same formula as their sparklier type space age highlighters, like Skywalker, and the same as Diamond Dasher. These two are the same formula. Mars Melter, just by swatching it, it is the same formula as the... Let me get them. As Comet Catcher and as Solar Sailor. These three from the Space Age Highlighter Collection are the more like sheeny type highlighters. They're not like the BAM metallic ones. I will test out the shades further, but so far really am liking Moon Cruiser. Very stunning. You guys know I love a super alien blue purple highlight. And the lip gloss feels really nice on the lips. I like the color. I like how it feels on my lips. Feels like a lip balm. Not too sure how long lasting this is, but again, I will continue to test it out. And with that, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys like seeing all of my swatches, my first impressions of this collection from Kaleidos. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Kaleidos did send this makeup to me in PR. They are not paying me to make this video, they just sent me the collection and that's about it. They're not paying for a review or anything like that. I just want to show you guys this collection because it's an exciting collection and I'm so excited to review all of these products for you. I'll probably have my review of this collection up later in the month or early July because I do really want to test out these products. But so far from first impressions, I'm pretty impressed. You can follow me on my social medias. I have two Instagram accounts. I live stream on Twitch three times a week and my Twitter are all linked down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.